Hello cybersecurity professionals. Welcome to AV Cyberactive. Hope everybody's having a lovely day. Today we are going to discuss another interesting topic that is zero day or zero day exploit and the measures that we can take to mitigate the threat. Let's go ahead. We'll start with the definition first. So the textbook definition of zero day exploit says that zero day or also known as the O day or zero day exploit is a cyber attack targeting a software vulnerability which is unknown to the software software vendor or to the antivirus vendor. Now that's the textbook definition, but uh, I'll try to explain it in a timeline, okay? So imagine there's a straight line and this is our timeline. Now, of course, the first way we got an attacker who spots uh, the software vulnerability before any of the in parties interested in mitigating it and then quickly creates an exploit, then uses the exploit for an uh, attack. Now such attacks are highly likely to be successful. Why? Because obviously the, the defenses are not in place. This makes zero-day attacks very severe security threat. Now next in timeline is the fact that now the vendor or the developer just learned about the zero-day and now they have quote-unquote zero days to fix that vulnerability. Now a zero-day attack takes place when the hacker actually exploits the flaw before the developers or the vendors have have even a chance to address it and then of course at last the vendor fixes the vulnerability this is where they would release your patches your cves gets fixed and microsoft releases what they call as patch tuesday that happens on every second tuesday of the month where they would release a number of patches so keep that in mind as well now the very act right from the attacker when it discovers the vulnerability till it gets fixed that time is called the zero day time Line. Hope that made sense. And now we learn who are these zero-day exploits for or who gets more or most targeted for these zero-day exploits. Beginning with the first one, that is government departments. As you might have seen, most of the government departments or government websites would be very loosely secured. So they become a very common target for zero-day exploits. Next, large industries. And of course, there is a monetary benefit why they would want to go for large industries. Next, individuals with access to valuable business data. Something that you might also have come across the terminology that is whaling. So that is how the individuals with access to valuable business data or C-level ex executives are duped into. They become very easy targets so that a zero-day vulnerability if exploited by using them, the damage that happens can be of grave extent. It might include getting information such as intellectual property information. Next, last number or innocent home users. Now, you see the innocent home users uh, who own appliances or, or IoT devices which are very vulnerable such as web browsers and vulnerable operating systems. Hackers can use these zero-day vulnerabilities to compromise computers and build massive networks of botnets. Next, hardware devices, firmware and IoT things. Now you see, how often have you seen hardware devices or firmwares or IoT devices getting patch updates? Very rare. Until something major happens. So the attackers, they already know that since, since these, these devices are very loosely packed, they can become easy targets for zero-day exploits. Next, and I think this is the most dangerous one, state-sponsored. So in some cases, or lately you might have observed in news as well, governments can use zero-day exploits to attack individuals, high net worth individuals, organizations, countries who threaten or who are a threat to their national security all right now the question comes how can you protect yourself against zero day vulnerability because the patches aren't there now at this point of time i'd like to bring your attention to another video that i've made on proactive prevention and detection that is for ids and ips i'll highly recommend you check out that video all right i'll put in the card stop here okay now back to zero day exploit vulnerability detection now there are a few ways how you can detect a zero day vulnerability number one by doing regular vulnerability scans. Now, none of these options that I'm going to talk about are or they give 100% security against a zero-day vulnerability, but at the very least, if you go with vulnerability scanning on a scheduled basis, this will make sure that at least the most high or critical vulnerabilities that come up on your scan results, you get them patched as soon as possible. Next, patch management. This is somewhat related to the previous one and which tells you to patch 
patch the high and critical severe severity exploits as soon as you can next one input validation and sanitization this is somewhat related to sql injection i've made a video on that as well you might want to check that on the cards now all being said and done this video video wouldn't be complete if i do not discuss about how do you manage or mitigate zero day threats there are a few ways let's discuss them beginning with number one preventative security now the number one way to mitigate the damage from a zero day attack in your onto your systems is to prevent it from happening in the first place itself so how do you do that you do it by maintaining good security hygiene that is you maintain a good firewall policy up-to-date antivirus or edr endpoint detection and response policies and making sure you're in touch with vendor to have them updated on a regular basis number two a locked down network now should a zero day threat is to materialize or make it to your network your next goal should be to limit it effects how do you do that you do it by restricting user access to only the essential files and systems we can limit the damage to the smallest number of systems this is also where the principle of least privilege comes into play to make sure the users in your account department shouldn't have access to sales department database or vice versa okay number three a good data backup system okay now whether your entire network has been exploited or just a small area has been exploited a good data backup is your protection or a seal against major lasting damage so keep in mind that having a good data backup means having procedures in place to create those regular data backup copies in the first place and make sure they can be restored safely at a later date now this is also where your disaster recovery program also comes in and having regular backup is also a part of your disaster recovery program next one intrusion protection now you see while having the precise methods of a zero day exploit can't be known in advance of course nobody is aware about the exploit yet so a network based ips that can monitor the traffic for unusual activity is a very handy tool the main advantage of network based ips check out my ideas versus ips video for that over a traditional anti-virus system is that it does not rely on checking the software against your known vulnerabilities or database threats this means it does not need to be updated or patched as often as your antivirus softwares network based ips devices works by monitoring your day-to-day -day patterns of network activity across the network and highlight if there are any deviations from baseline network next one full cover protection now this is used in combination of techniques that can uh, protect prevent and mitigate against the kind of threats that even top security firms haven't patched yet so i think it's important to keep your organization secure whatever it might come up against in the future this is also where buying a cyber security insurance can also be considered and of course having security experts 24 across 7 to monitor your systems is an excellent bonus hope that helps now what i've covered here is just the basics of zero day exploit and steps to mitigate it there's an ocean of knowledge available over the internet and i'll link some down below so you can refer to to improve your knowledge on that one and of course if you need any cybersecurity training consultations i'll leave my email address on my contact down below feel free to get in touch all right and with that i'll end the video at the very least share this video with your family and friends whom you would think would benefit from this video all right i wish you all have an awesome day ahead bye for now